Hey guys, welcome back to Cloud Tech. In this video, I'm going to solve a problem which was asked in Capgemini interview. The candidate had 2.9 years of experience working as a Java developer and apart from Java, he was having knowledge about Java 8 features, writing Spring Boot or REST APIs by using Spring Boot. And when he solved this problem statement, he was selected and he was offered a CTC of 8.7 MPA. So apart from this problem statement, he was asked a few query questions and I'm going to discuss those query questions once I solve this problem. Now, let me explain you what was the problem statement and how he solved it. So he was provided a string and he was asked to find the count of each character in the given string. And the condition was he was asked to write the code using Java 8 features. So let us consider this is going to be our input string. So H E double L O double O. So this hello is going to be input string and we have to find the count of each character. So here we can see H has been offered one time. E has been offered one time, L has been offered two times, so the count should be two. O has been offered two times, so it should display output as a two. So here we are showing the character along with their count. And once I solve this problem, I will discuss the theory questions which were asked in the interview. So let's get started and write the code to solve this problem statement. So here you can see I have written a class, count each character in the string. And inside that, I have written a main method, which is going to be starting point for our programming execution. Now, let me declare an input string, which is going to be our input string. So, string str is equal to h e double l double o, which is there in our problem statement. Now, I need to use Java 8 features to find the count of each character in this string. So, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use screen feature, which is available in Java 8. For that, I'm going to use arrays dot string and I'm going to get the array out of this string or a character array. So here I'm going to use str dot split. So I'm going to split that string by each character. So for that I'm going to use empty space. Okay. And then I need to collect the result and the result is going to be the character along with their count. So for that I'm going to use collect method and this collect method provides an option to group the elements along with their count. So here I'm going to use a method collectors from collectors class collectors dot grouping by. So this collectors dot grouping by method will group the characters and this accepts a parameter which is a function or you can say it as a classifier. So here I'm going to mention each character and we need count of that character. So I'm going to use again a method which is there in collectors dot counting. So this method is going to provide the count of each character. Okay, so here what we did, we converted this string into character array by using array's split method, uh, string dot split method. And we are going to use Java 8 feature. So we converted that into a stream by using stream function. And then we have to group the elements along with the, our characters along with their count. For that, we use the method collectors.grouping by and collectors.counting. Okay. So this grouping by method groups the characters and it takes this parameter to count the characters. Okay. This method returns a map. So I'll put this into a map, the result which is coming out of this expression. So I'll put it into a map and that map is going to be a map of string comma log because here it will be your character or string and this is going to be your long that is going to be the count. And I will put this into a variable of type map. Okay, let me import this map from java.util.map and then simply what I can do, I can print the elements of this map. So I can use simply this out that is system.out.println and I will simply print the map. Okay. Now let me run this program and show you the output. Okay. So here you can see the output E is equal to one. That means E has been offered one time. H is equal to one. That means H has been offered one time. L is equal to two. That means L has been offered two times and O is equal to two. That means O has been offered two times. 
Okay, guys. So that was all about the problem statement and how we solved it. Then I'm going to discuss now the very questions which were asked in the interview. So the first question which was asked him is what he was provided uh, this method signature and he was asked what is the meaning of this dot in this method parameter. Okay, so the meaning of this dot is nothing but you can pass the variable or n number of arguments, one or more number of arguments or zero or more number of arguments. Okay, so when you call this method and while calling this method, you can pass either zero arguments or you can pass n number of arguments like a, b, c, d, or you can pass n number of arguments more than zero arguments, something like this. Okay, so here is a type which is of string type, so you can pass n number of trimming arguments to this method while calling it. The next question which was asked is what was the difference between JDK, JRE and JVM and why Java is called as platform independent programming language. So JDK uh, basically stands for Java development kit. So when you download JDK setup, that is nothing but your Java development kit, then it comes with JRE. So JDK you can use for development of your program or you can use it for compilation of your program. JRE stands for Java runtime environment. So it is basically used to run your program or it provides an environment to run your programs. And then JVM is a Java virtual machine which basically used to execute your Java code. So when you compile your code, it gets converted into byte code and that byte code needs to be executed on a machine and for that, we need JVM. So JVM comes into picture when your program execution starts. The next is why Java is called as the platform independent programming language. So you can compile your Java code by using Java C compiler. So that will be generating a dot class file and that dot class file contains your byte code. And now if you need to run this byte code, you need a JVM and JVM can be on any system. So you can compile your code only once and you can run it on anywhere. That is the reason it is called as platform independent programming language. So first Java C compiler can be used to compile your code that will generate a class file and that class file contains your byte code and that byte code can be executed on any system. Okay. So that is the reason it is called as platform independent programming language. The next question which was asked is what does system.gc and runtime.gc methods do? So if you have idea about garbage selection, then you probably have idea about this method. So these methods are used for garbage collection. So these methods request JVM to run the garbage collector. The basic difference between these two methods is system.gc is a class method while runtime.gc is an instance method and usually a system.gc is more convenient than runtime.gc so you should go with system.gc okay so that was the third question then there is one more question he was asked is about the final keyword so what is the use of final keyword so you can use final keyword to restrict the uses of variable or a class or a method. So if you use this final keyword with a variable, then the value of that final variable cannot be modified. So it becomes a kind of constant. Then uh, if you use a final keyword with the method, then uh, you cannot overwrite the final method. The method which is declared as a final cannot be overridden. And if you use that final keyword with a class, then you cannot inherit that class. Okay, so the class cannot be extended. So that is the use of final keyword. So you can use final keyword with your variable method or a class. If you use it, the variable, the variable becomes a kind of constant. You cannot modify the value of that variable. Second thing is if you use it with a method, you can you cannot overwrite that particular method. And if you use it with a 
class, then that class cannot be extended. And the last question which was asked is, so what is the use of volatile keyword? Okay, so this basically volatile keyword is used in multi-threading environment. So it makes sure that the changes made in one thread are immediately reflecting in other thread. Okay, so volatile keyword is basically used to make the changes which made in thread one are available in another thread. Okay, guys, so that's it from this video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. That will motivate us to create more videos like this. Thank you. Bye-bye.